This is Body, Brain, and Pain. I'm Erin Babineau. And I'm Michelle Steggy. We are two doctors of physical therapy and orthopedic specialists here to have an approachable and courageous conversation about pain and our bodies that will be forever changing and aging. This podcast is for everyone, not just medical providers. The better you understand pain, the more control you gain. Welcome back, everyone. Erin and I are here to talk to you about the very basics of sleep hygiene. So sleep is when we heal, it's when we learn and process things, so it's a really important aspect of our life on multiple levels. Now, last episode, we talked about how to check in with your body, pain tracking, and staying curious about your body, and oftentimes there's no finish line for this stuff. We're not fixing something. It's a journey and we're creating new habits and sleep hygiene is one of these habits. There's a lot of research out there on the impacts of poor sleep quality, amplifying our pain and increasing our body's alarm system. And it's really interesting because when you look at these studies, it seems like the sleep has a bigger impact on pain levels than pain has on our sleep quality. And so if we have a really awful night of sleep, it's going to amplify our pain sensitivity and how we feel and how much pain we're in the next day versus pain. Yes, it is likely going to impact our sleep some, but it seems to a lesser degree, which is just reinforcing the fact that sleep is extremely important. Yeah, you know, if you're not sleeping well, you're probably not healing very well either. So, you know, oftentimes that's a first goal that we are addressing with people. People, you know, if they have large amounts of pain and they're also not sleeping well, we actually talk about sleep hygiene as their first goal. And that is because we know if we can get people sleeping better, they will have a significant less amount of pain Mm -hmm. because of all this, you know, research we're reading currently. So during times of stress, especially uh, right now, that would be a time um, your priority list as far as order (laughs) would be sleep, then eating healthy and then getting that exercise Mm -hmm. in. So sleep hygiene is so, so important and Um, Michelle, let's start talking about how we can start addressing that. Yeah. What are our biggest influencers? Yep. So we'll just get into some of the basic facts. This one is pretty widely known. For adults, the ideal amount of sleep is between seven and nine hours. And we have a chart in the references for all ages, which I think is super helpful to see because it does change throughout our life. On top of getting that seven to nine hours, it's important that you're getting uninterrupted sleep because that allows us to get into that REM cycle of sleep, which is really important for healing. So seven to nine hours, uninterrupted sleep. The other thing that's really important is that your bedroom should be isolated to just sleep and sex. So nothing else, no phones, no TV, (laughs) just sleep and sex. Outside of that, a wind down routine is super important. So this is something that's going to happen outside of the bedroom. And it's you taking the time to calm your body down before you're going to sleep. And and so along those lines too, it's important to commit to a sleep schedule. So trying to get to bed and waking at the same time every day. Which we know is tough. It is challenging. Yep, I struggle with that one for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Um, Other considerations we talk about is what we're consuming around that bedtime and throughout our day. Um, So that includes what we're drinking, what we're eating, and what medication we're on. So if we talk about um, what we're drinking first, um, we want to avoid fluid consumption two hours prior to going to bed so that we avoid unnecessary bathroom trips. I know in the pelvic health world, this is huge, especially with urgency and, um, nighttime bathroom trips. Yep. So avoiding, you know, water, or whatever you're drinking before bed. And then caffeine consumption is huge too. So 
hopefully you're only having a cup or two of some caffeine a day and stopping 2 p.m. or earlier mm -hmm. if you can. So that has a large influence on our sleep um, later that night. The last one is alcohol consumption. So healthy amounts are around two-ish drinks for males and one drink for females per day. The reason why this is so important is because alcohol affects not only our inflammation levels, but also our circadian rhythm and our ability to get into REM. So like Michelle, you just said, you know, if we're not getting into REM, we aren't healing and getting that good time in. So mm -hmm. alcohol doesn't allow us to do that as well. Right. Um, with meals, you know, not going to bed too full or too hungry. So timing your meal appropriately. Um, and then medication, that was our last thing as far as what we're consuming. Um, there's some medication, the side effects are, um, causing you to be more awake. So working with your physician on timing of medication, if you notice any correlations with that, and, and most physicians are really good about that, but yeah. just double checking your meds. Mm -hmm. yep. So another topic that is important for sleep is exercise and deep breathing, which likely sounds very familiar from some of our recent <laughs> episodes. Um, but we know that it's helpful for helpful for stress management, but it also is really helpful for getting better sleep. So it's all connected. So as far as breathing goes, taking just a few minutes during your wind down routine that we mentioned is a great time to work on some deep breathing. And there's a whole episode on breathing techniques like we talked about, but for sleep in particular, it's going to help keep us present and calm, which will help relax our nervous system, meaning better sleep. And in the references, you'll find an article that talks about this four, seven, eight breathing technique, which I personally, it's one of my favorites. I use it. If I, for some reason, wake up in the middle of the night, can't get back to sleep. This is one that I use. And so the four is four seconds of an inhale. Seven is holding that inhale for seven seconds. And then eight is exhaling for eight seconds. And so you would go through this cycle a handful of times. I usually don't count when I do it, but inhale, four second count as you're inhaling, Hold your breath for seven seconds and then a nice big exhale for eight seconds. And it's really amazing how helpful that can be and how much it calms your nervous system. It's super cool. Yeah. And like you said, all connected. Yeah. I mean, if that then helps us sleep and then sleep helps, helps us feel less pain. Right. Oh my gosh, yeah. it's this kind of endless circle. Yep, and like we mentioned too with exercise, if you're getting that daily exercise that we've talked about, that is also going to help you sleep. And so yeah. getting that movement throughout the day helps you wind down and sleep better. Yeah, but not right before bed. Right, <laughs> exactly. Timing is important for that exercise. Timing is important, yep. yes. One clinic example we're having right now with COVID and the holiday is rightfully a very stressful time because people are not gathering how they want to um, or being very good about wearing their mask or whatever it is. And um, thank you for doing that. Yes. Keep it up for our world and community. We applaud everyone for doing the right mm -hmm. thing for each other right now. Um, but I have sadly, and I know Michelle, you have too, but we've had more and more people getting COVID uh, or even having family members in the ICUs right now uh, and struggling. So I've had quite a few patients coming in and yeah. obviously stress is rightfully amplified. And so sleep has not been great. So a lot of people telling me, oh my gosh, I've been not getting good sleep. I'm restless all night. Again, rightfully so. And then they're like, and my pain has increased. And, um, you know, we're having that conversation of, you know, that is a normal yes. physiological response. So I am hope that you guys can validate that for yourselves. And again, mm -hmm. really prioritize this right now. Like just getting in a good sleep routine the best we can and doing those things that we talked about um, to create new habits and help you get 
as much mm-hmm. sleep as you can is is so important for not only you having less pain, but also just your mental health and general physical health. So um, thanks, everyone. Continue to, you know, socially distance and mask and do yeah. all the right things. I know it's really hard right now, but we appreciate yeah. it. And yeah, this is a great sleep. time for all of us so. to reflect on our own sleep hygiene and see if there's any areas for improvement. And like Aaron said, make this your number one priority right now and realize how helpful it is for your mental and physical health as well as pain management. So know how important sleep is, prioritize it, see if there's any areas that you can work to improve it. And that will, again, help your mental and physical health. So thank you for joining us today. We hope you have a wonderful week and we will be back soon. Thanks everyone. Sleep well.